Welcome to part two of this video series on the solo growth model. So in this entry of the series, I'll be going over the steady state of the solo growth model. In particular, I will define what a steady state is. I will also show you how to find the steady state, and then I'll show you why a steady state exists in the model. So let's go ahead and establish what a steady state is. And before doing so, let's also reestablish our endogenous variables for this model. In particular, we're dealing with per capita terms here. So we have capital per capita, we have GDP per capita, consumption per capita, and investment per capita. In a steady state, all endogenous variables of the model are constant. So in other words, there's no growth in the model when we're in a steady state. So in particular, we would just say that Capital per capita is equal to some constant value. Let's go ahead and call it a star. Similarly, GDP per capita would also be constant. Let's say that's Y star. Consumption per capita, that will also be constant. Let's call that C star. And finally, investment per capita would also be constant in a steady state. Let's go ahead and call that value I star. So one key question that pops up then is, does a steady state exist in the solo growth model? Well, let's not answer that question right now. Let's instead assume that a steady state does exist. And now let's go ahead and actually solve for the steady state of the solo model as a function of the parameters of the model. So to start that, let me go ahead and write the capital accumulation equation that we derived in the previous video. In particular, we found that capital in period t plus 1, so let's say t plus 1 is tomorrow and t is today. So capital tomorrow would then be equal to the savings rate times the per capita production function today plus non-depreciated capital per capita today. And remember, non-depreciated capital is just the fraction of capital that doesn't depreciate, where delta is our depreciation rate. So let's first analyze this equation. And another thing I'm going to do here, actually, to kind of simplify things, is let's move the kt over to the left-hand side here. But let's leave the delta kt on the right-hand side. So specifically, let's write it as follows. So kt plus 1 minus kt is equal to S A K T to the alpha minus delta K T. The left hand side is often abbreviated in textbooks as follows. So delta K T plus one. So the left hand side is just the one period change in capital per capita between periods T and T plus one. Now I'd like to analyze the steady state of this equation. And one thing you'll notice that's very convenient is this equation only involves capital per capita. So we don't have to worry about solving for the values of GDP per capita, consumption per capita, or investment per capita. We can do that later with the other equations of the solo model. So all we need to do is plug in K star for all of the KT and KT plus one terms in this equation, because remember in a steady state, KT is equal to K star for all t, right? So if we're in a steady state, there's no growth in the model, all endogenous variables are constant. So if that's the case, well, this left-hand side, which is kt plus one minus kt, if we plug in k star for both of those, we just get zero on the left-hand side. So now let's go ahead and plug in k star on the right-hand side. And now we have one equation and one unknown. That unknown is k star. So let's go ahead and solve for k star now. So I'm gonna move the delta k to the left-hand side. So I have delta k star is equal to s a k star to the alpha. Next, I'm gonna divide each side by delta. So I have k star is equal to s a over delta times k star to the alpha. And I'll divide each side by k star to the alpha. So just cancel that guy out. 
with k star to the alpha. And we can actually rewrite this left-hand side here as k star to the one minus alpha. And that's equal to S A over delta. And now we're almost done with actually solving for the steady state level of capital per person or capital per capita. And that is K star is equal to S A over delta, all raised to the power of one over one minus alpha. So this is the closed form solution for the steady state value of capital per capita. And we can actually go ahead and use this to find the steady state values of the GDP per capita, consumption per capita, and investment per capita. So let's first start by finding the steady state value of GDP per capita. So remember in the solo model, the GDP is determined by the production function where in this case, this is a Cobb-Douglas production function with constant returns to scale. So if we were to evaluate it at a steady state, we just have Y star is equal to A, where A is our total factor productivity, or it could represent our technology, times K star to the alpha. So all you need to do here is just plug in K star from our solution into the production function. So if you do that, you get Y star is equal to A times S A over delta raised to the power alpha over one minus alpha. Now let's go ahead and find investment per capita in a steady state. If you recall, investment is equal to the savings rate times GDP per capita. And again, I'm just evaluating this equation in per capita terms. So we simply plug in our value for Y star into this investment equation, and that gives us I star is equal to S times A times S A over delta raised to the power alpha over one minus alpha. And last but not least, let's go ahead and find the steady state value of consumption per capita. And we can do so by utilizing the resource strain, which is C star plus I star is equal to Y star. So this is the steady state version of the resource constraint. So I'm gonna rewrite this as C star is equal to Y star minus I star and I'm gonna plug in S times Y star for I star. So we have C star is equal to Y star minus S Y star, which this is just one minus S Y star. And now we can go ahead and plug in our solution for Y star, and that gives us C star is equal to one minus S times A, times S A over delta raised to the power alpha over one minus alpha. Now that we've solved for the closed form solution of all four endogenous variables in the solo model, let's answer the question, why does a steady state exist in the solo growth model? So first I'm gonna give you two reasons why it exists, and then I'll show you graphically why that's the case. The first reason is that we have a positive depreciation rate in the model. So capital depreciates every period and it does so at a constant rate. Second, the production function exhibits constant returns to scale. Specifically, if we're talking about a parameter in the model, that production parameter alpha is between zero and one. And because of that, the production function is constant returns to scale or exhibits constant returns to scale. So because of these two reasons, a steady state exists. And I'll show you why, but first we need to actually analyze one particular equation from our model, which is the law of motion for capital, or I also call it the capital accumulation equation. So let's go ahead and write that down again here. 
So this left-hand side, that's just the change in capital from periods T and T plus one. This right-hand side is what's interesting here. So let's actually define two functions here, this function and this function. So we have the savings rate times the production function, and then we have how much capital depreciates every period. And let's go ahead and graph these two functions. So we're gonna put capital per person or capital per capita on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis will represent multiple variables. So first let's deal with this function right here, which is just delta times KT. So this is just a linear function with a slope delta. So let's say it looks like that. So we'll call that delta KT. Next, let's graph this function right here. So S times the production function. And note that alpha is between zero and one. So let's imagine for a second that alpha is equal to one half, for example. So this would just be K raised to the power of one half, which is just the square root of K. And a square root basically would look graphically like that, right? And we're just multiplying that by S times A. And it turns out that if this was one third, one fourth, basically anything between zero and one, it's gonna have this shape, right? It's just the slope's gonna be a little bit different. So we know that this function is going to look something like this. And what's important is that at some point, it's actually going to cross the other function. So let's go ahead and label this S A K T raised to the power alpha. And this graph is what's going to show us why a steady state exists. So if you notice here where these two points intersect, that's actually going to be our steady state, right? Because if you recall from the previous discussion, in a steady state, kt plus one minus kt is equal to zero. And the gap between these two curves is kt plus one minus kt. So let's divide this into two areas then. On the left-hand side, you should notice that this curve, S times A K T to the alpha, so savings rate times a production function, is strictly above this depreciation line, as I'm going to call it. So in that case, well, this right-hand side is positive, therefore the left-hand side is positive. So in this case, K T plus one is greater than K T. In contrast, on the right-hand side, it follows that K T plus one is less than K T. So first I wanna analyze the left-hand side here. So suppose we are at some point in time right here. So let's say we're at K, I don't know, let's go ahead and call it K1. Let's say that is capital in period one. And in this case, investment is strictly greater. So this S times A K T to the alpha, that's just investment. Remember investment is savings times GDP. So this is just investment. So investment is strictly greater than depreciation. So if that's the case, capital will continue to grow and will continue to move in this trajectory going right. However, you'll notice that the growth rate of capital continues to decrease over time. And that's because the gap between investment, so this is the investment curve, this is the depreciation curve, the gap between these two curves is shrinking and what eventually happens is we converge to this point right here, which is our steady state. And once we're at this point, in the absence of any shocks in the economy, we're gonna be stuck at this point. In contrast, let's go ahead and suppose that capital in period one is over here. So if capital in period one is on the right-hand side instead, well, that just implies that depreciation is outpacing investment. So capital per capita is actually shrinking over time. However, it's shrinking at a decreased rate because you'll notice here that the depreciation line, the distance between the depreciation line and the investment curve is shrinking. And again, will eventually converge to this point right here, which is our steady state. So regardless of where we start, 
whether we start at a point where there is growth or whether we start at a point where the economy is shrinking, we're still going to end up at the steady state. And in the absence of shocks, we will remain at the steady state. In summary, we know a steady state exists in the solo model because capital depreciates at a constant rate every period and the production function exhibits constant returns to scale. And I showed you why that's the case graphically. Additionally, regardless of where the economy starts, so whether it starts at a point where investment dominates depreciation or vice versa, the economy will always converge to a steady state. And remember, in the case where investment outpaces depreciation, it's only going to do so for so long because of constant returns to scale. And as a result, capital will initially grow, but it'll slow down and eventually it will become constant and will be at a steady state. In contrast, if depreciation is outpacing investment, well, it'll only do so for a short period of time. And so capital will decrease over time but it'll do so at a decreasing rate and eventually it'll converge to the steady state where the economy will remain unchanged in the absence of a shock. And that last bit is important because what do I mean by shocks? Well, shocks can occur in the economy through different channels in this model. It can occur through a change in the savings rate. It can also occur due to maybe a shock to technology or total factor productivity. What if the depreciation rate changes in the economy? Well, again, all of these things can actually take us out of our initial steady state, and we may actually converge to a new steady state. But that'll be the topic for the next video. So I will catch you then.